Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. So I am incredibly, unbelievably excited for this video as I am going to be reviewing my favourite ever TV show. Now that is a massive statement, evidently so, because I've got this whole channel dedicated to movies and TV shows. And this is me saying that this is my favourite ever TV show, but it is definitely true. I am going to be talking about Marvel's Runaways, all the seasons, so seasons one, two and three. This is a spoiler video, so if you haven't seen Marvel Runaways, then probably go away, check it out and then come back and you will not feel like you've done anything wrong because this is a phenomenal series. It's just absolutely brilliant. It's not only set in the comic book world, it's set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe world with a fantastic suite of characters, phenomenal storylines, the visuals are just out of this world and just the characters, like I just said, they're already phenomenal but they're just su super layered, super complicated, so much going on with all of them, great relationships, great magical powers, just everything about this show is just absolutely brilliant. I am so gutted that it's finished and that, you know, it's axed. I hope that in some ways it is able to have a rebirth or a resurface on Disney Plus because Marvel's Runaways is honestly just a show with just so much potential. All of the seasons that they did for this show are just so gripping. Every single episode just leaves you jaw dropped and kind of unbelievably was waiting for the next episode because it's just so gripping. I was never bored throughout the entire run of this TV show and you know in some seasons in some TV shows you're kind of just waiting for the next couple of episodes to just hurry up before something big or something like that kind of happens but in Marvel's Runaways that honestly just was not the case. The characters are just so good they just keep you gripped for more and it's nice because they have both kind of younger teenage characters as well as adult characters and at points sometimes the adult characters were just so captivating that you're kind of even more drawn to their storylines than the kids storylines so they do evenly match obviously the kids stuff is done a bit more because the whole comic book and the whole kind of tv premise is based around these characters so they rightfully so have a bit more kind of storyline potential on screen but it's just, yeah, not to say that that parents aren't getting their limelight as well because like I said, they are just so captivating. But yeah, this show is just brilliant. If you haven't seen it, please, please, please check it out because it is so good and you will thank me later because it will be a great investment of your time. But if you have seen it, then please stick around as I will be reviewing seasons one, two and three in the traditional way that we review content on this channel. So just sit back and relax as we are going to talk about Marvel's Runaways. So in terms of all of the storylines, I'll go through them season by season. So season one is a really introductory season, but even so, it's just such a gripping season, just straight from the offset, it's just so brilliant. Anyway, so I guess I would wrap the storyline of season one kind of being that they're kind of setting up all of the different characters. You kind of see where they are in the different cliques in high school and equally all of the parents, you kind of understand okay these are the guys that are really good with technology, these are the parents that are kind of really thuggish and will kind of do anything and stuff on anyone, these guys are kind of ruthless in terms of business and these guys are really good with kind of medicine and all of that kind of stuff. So they kind of set all of the different kind of parents and kids in their different groups and then you kind of see them as a unit in both kind of the kids unit in school and then the parents unit with this pride organization so that was really cool just to kind of establish the two different worlds and the different characters and I feel like the show is just so strong on two levels one all of the kind of aesthetic visuals powers kind of all the comic -y book stuff that you typically expect from this kind of genre is just done so brilliantly and not done in a cheesy kind of way because sci-fi content can be a bit unbelievable can be a bit cheap at points whereas Runaways is just a show that just does not ever kind of get classed in that group but then on the other side you have all of the relationships and it's just so brilliant I feel like you know having a TV show just gives you the luxury of really investing time really getting to know different characters what makes them tick what kind of winds them up what the different dynamics are with the other different characters and I just feel like Marvel Runaways especially in season one was just so rich in all of the kind of family dynamics, especially with the fact that they haven't run away yet. So because of all of that, you have all of the different family units and kind of, you know, the parents and the kids kind of struggle and tension between them. 
each on an individual family level and then on a group level as well. So kind of season one was really great in kind of setting up all of this world. Obviously the first season to the last episode is very, very different. So the first season is all about the parents kind of doing really dark, scary stuff. And it's kind of a lot of light and dark kind of setting, literally obviously with Jonah's powers and stuff like that. But in terms of on the light side, you kind of see the kids and their kind of innocence and them wanting to kind of stop their parents. And then on the parent side, to begin with anyway, you don't really understand why they're doing what they're doing. And that kind of dynamic and tension is just explored really strongly in the first season and like I said before as well all of the different mini tension dynamics with all of the different families is done really really well as well so all in all the first season of Runaways is absolutely epic. Then we have season two and season two is very different to season one for quite a few number of reasons so firstly the kids have now run away from their parents so they've literally kind of are on their own and when that first happened I was a little bit like hmm how is this going to play out because I loved season one and I loved it for all of the reasons that I just said I loved all of the different tension and dynamics and all of the kind of family unit stuff and now that the kids have run away I was just a bit like okay is this going to be as good is it going to be able to live up to the first season which is always a question for a sequel slash a second season and season two actually does step it up in a very different way in terms of the stakes firstly are a lot higher obviously Jonas plan is now in motion and kind of the whole world universe even as well is kind of at jeopardy so kind of from the stakes level it's really really high and then kind of the fact that the kids are now in their own unit and you can kind of really establish the Marvel Runaways group which is really really nice and then we kind of have three kind of fractions set up in the second season so you have all of the kids on one side and the parents and Jonah were kind of one group in the first season Whereas in the second season, they've kind of pulled Jonah away. So there's kind of three different kind of groups where you have the kids, you have Jonah, and then you have the parents. And then kind of some, some kind of teams different merging happening with, for example, with Carolina kind of join, joining Jonah. And then kind of some of the parents kind of joining allegiances with Jonah and then trying to backstab him. And then the, all of the parents trying to kind of get the kids back and then kind of rival the kids and then kind of try to beat Jonah. So from a dynamic point of view, it was a lot more different. And like I said before, from a stakes point of view, it was a lot more different as well. And the other thing that I really loved about season two, I mean, season one had this for sure, but season two especially just felt like mini movies within each episode. For the main one that I really wanted to kind of pull out in terms of expressing that was the one with AWOL where he's trying to double cross everyone and is trying to go from team to team and is kind of having that hostage situation so it was just such a cool season because it had like chase movie episodes kind of some episodes where you're kind of having a hostage situation it was just every single episode just kind of felt like it had a kind of a different theme kind of a bit like the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies in terms of, you know, the Ant-Man movie, the first one was a heist movie, the Spider-Man one was kind of like a teenage movie. Each movie has its own kind of genre, and I felt like they had all of that within the second season of Runaway. So, yeah, the second season was absolutely brilliant. And then we have the third season, and so the third season was just absolutely epic as well. The third season, I felt, definitely felt the most connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There were little nods here and there, to the Avengers and Marvel world, such as, you know, having Stan Lee in the first season, kind of referring to Wakanda by Alex in one episode, and then the whole Dark Dimension stuff, and then the time traveling stuff. So I feel like how Endgame ended and how the third season ended with the whole travel stuff was just a kind of a nice little nod. I don't know if they did it on purpose. I hope they did it on purpose. But it's just a really nice little homage to the kind of mothership that is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But yeah, in terms of the storyline, it was nice that they kind of wrapped up all of the Jonah stuff in terms of his family kind of going on into all of the different bodies and stuff. And I really liked how they really positioned Alex kind of breaking away from the fraction of the runaway kids. I know pretty much in season two as well, he was kind of peppered around them, but he kind of was do always doing his own thing. But I feel like in the third season, they were really introducing his darker side. We know in the comics that he kind of betrays the runaways and kind of really does do his own thing, which we also explored in the final episode. And I feel like, yeah, they were kind of introducing that kind of detachment from his character. And I feel like had the show continued as they kind of did tease in the final scene, he would have kind of broken away and kind of done his own thing. It is a shame because I do feel like the Runaways group are a really cool group, but I also feel like with the third season, they obviously knew that they were wrapping it up and they wanted to kind of 
end the show in a way that it was kind of complete. So I feel like they killed off a lot of characters that they potentially wouldn't have killed off had the show continued. And kind of with that, I just feel like the storyline of Nico and Morgan kind of did really capitalise the entire third season and it was all about those characters and that world and that was really interesting actually because thus far we've only really seen the Dark Dimension explored a little bit in Doctor Strange whereas this entire 10 episode third season run was all about the Dark Dimension so you really got to know a lot more about it. I hope it really is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and I hope that one day you know you do get to see these characters either on the big screen or on some other adaptation on Disney Plus as they are such brilliant characters, so much potential, and I just feel like, you know, even the third season as a big figure, the big bad now that Jonah was gone, I feel like Elizabeth Hurley really did step up to, kind of step up to Jonah's plate, which Julian McMahon did such a brilliant job in playing that super villain that, you know, Elizabeth Hurley was able to step up to the plate and do that with Morgan. So yeah, the third season was really, really gripping, really gutting that it was all over, but I just feel like they wrapped all the storylines up really, really well. I love the fact that at the end of the ninth episode, you think that Gert's dead, and then the tenth episode just kind of has that happy ending, but just has that tension there as well again, in terms of whether they can rescue her or not and kind of change time like they would want to kind of have that happy ending but then the ending ending the true ending with Alex kind of potentially betraying them in the future it was just such a brilliant way that they kind of ended the seasons and the final episode and the kind of show in general like I said I do hope it comes back but as far as the storylines go for the first second and third season of this phenomenal show it was just absolutely brilliant and was just captivating literally every single episode. I know a couple of other shows, especially Charmed as an example, has now got the little twist element in the end of each episode where you just can't wait for the next episode. But I just feel like Runaways just did it so really, really well, where you really, really just cannot wait for the next episode. And if you are able to binge it, then you're just gonna binge it because it's just so gripping. So like I said before, the casting in Marvel's Runaways is just absolutely brilliant. The casting directors just did an absolutely phenomenal job in casting this show because they've just got such talented actors playing these characters so brilliantly. The parents in particular, I just feel like, were so brilliantly casted. The characters of Leslie and Tina were just so brilliant. Jonah, Morgan, all of them were just so captivating and just so rich and just such strong performances, true actors just doing such a brilliant job and the kids equally, obviously they're not at the same level as the parents yet, but were equally just super super captivating. One or two of them you could just see that they were a little bit overacting and kind of overcompensating in certain moments, but yeah just the parents in particular, I just really wanted to acknowledge that they just did such a good job in A, casting them and B, you know, their portrayal in this show was just done absolutely brilliantly. But yeah, let's go through all of the different characters one by one. So Nico, I honestly feel like Nico was, out of all of the different characters, teenagers and parents included, was probably the one that was the most central, the one that had the most focus put on them. I just feel like, you know, her power, she is literally just a powerhouse. She has so many powers within her staff that she was literally able to do anything she wanted. And especially in the third season, the entire season was pretty much based around her character. The actress did a, such a good job in communicating and portraying this character. I'm glad they didn't restrict her powers like they have in the comic books, whereby she can only do one spell and then she can never really do that spell again. So I'm glad they didn't restrict her character like that. And yeah, she just did an absolutely phenomenal job. I think Chase was a really, really cool character as well, I feel like. He really only really came into his own when there were the dynamic struggle between him and his mother and father. He was alright as a bit of a leader figure within the teenage Marvel Runaway groups, but outside of the second season and the third season final episodes, whereby in the second season he kind of betrays the group, so to speak, and kind of goes to the parents and his old life. Fair enough, he was tricked into it, but I just feel like that's kind of where he really came into his own, and of course, in the final episode of the third season where he was literally the one that was pretty much saving the day, doing all of the time traveling, explaining to the other runaways what's kind of happened over the last couple of years. So I just feel like he was a good character. I would have wanted to see a bit more, especially because Greg Sulkin is a great actor. I would have wanted to see a little bit more from his character, but what we did see, it was really, really good. We then have Alex Wilder, who was really, really cool. You know going into it, at least comic book fans do anyway, that 
he is eventually going to betray the group. And in the first half of the show, so, you know, the whole of the first season and the half of the second season, you don't really see his rebellious side. But then eventually you do kind of see him kind of breaking away from the group, kind of having his own motivations and kind of dark intentions, especially when we had Cloak and Dagger cameoing O oh, into the show, which, by the way, was absolutely brilliant. And they were able to see that, actually, he has really dark motivations in terms of the fact that he wants to steal all of his friends' powers and use them for himself. So I just feel like he's the most twisted character. He was really interesting, but, yeah, I would have wanted to see a bit more from what would have happened potentially in the future. What we did see in the show for his character was excellent. I just wish we could have seen what would happen next, but I guess they purposefully ended it in that open-ended kind of way. We then have Gert. Gert was a great character as well. I feel like... She had a bit of a novelty that they were kind of capitalising on from Game of Thrones in the sense that she's got this little dragon. But I just feel like they didn't really use that opportunity to their max. Yeah, sure, you know, old Lays helped save the day in some different episodes and some different scenes. But I just would have wanted to see Gert and old Lace really come into their own a lot more. She had a great dynamic with Chase and she was kind of that rebellious character that kind of became normal in the same way that... Chase was a jock who just kind of became normal. So they kind of had that kind of stance with their different characters in terms of their cliche types kind of becoming not so cliche. But yeah, Gert, I feel like out of all of them, despite the fact that she had a very strong ending, just probably could have been developed a bit more. Carolina was a great character too. I feel like she really came into her own in the second season, especially when she was getting to know Jonah a lot more. But I feel like as soon as Nico killed Jonah, that kind of stopped Carolina's development a little bit. She was there as acting a bit of a kind of barrier to Nico and kind of bringing her back to normality and kind of having a bit of tension with her. But again, I feel like, you know, they kind of, pushed her really well and really far in the second season but in the third season she kind of was a bit stagnant. Molly again a cool character kind of a kid with too much power um, and then kind of being the true heart of the group whenever the group was kind of fragmenting and breaking away Molly was the one that kind of brought them all together. Obviously she's the youngest actress and I feel like some moments she could have acted a little bit better but yeah, for what we did see, I feel like her character was really, really strong as well. Then we have the parents, and honestly, I think I'm a bit too obsessed with the parents because they were just so brilliantly captivating. But yeah, Tina was just such a good leader, such a layered, complicated character that, you know, she was just so captivating with her powers as well. In the third season, I feel like she really flipped completely where she was kind of part of the Runaways group, kind of doing her own spells and really, really helping save the day. Actually, her character really did go through very strong developmental bases. The first season, she's just an incredibly strong, powerful CEO leader, kind of holding together her job, holding together her marriage, holding together her kind of family. So yeah, really, really good, strong first season. And then the second season, just kind of rebelling against kind of Jonah, trying to kind of control the Pride group. And then equally in the second season, having her own kind of spin when the magistrate's family kind of take over her body. So that was a really nice opportunity for her character to kind of develop the actress to kind of try new things. I'm sure the actress absolutely loved it. And then, like I said, in the third season to kind of do all of the magical stuff. Leslie, again, was a brilliant character whereby you could really see she was just this pure evil woman in the first season. And then kind of grew to understand that what she, everything she knew was not right and she's kind of turning her world upside down kind of being the head of the Gaborium church and then kind of exploring what a world is like without all of that and totally seeing her world flipping upside down and then kind of understanding all of the things that she's done in her life is just wrong and then kind of coming to terms with that and then kind of equally joining the runaways to some extent at least just a brilliant character a brilliant actress kind of bringing this character to life then we have julian mcmahon who played the big bad jonah absolutely brilliantly a lot of dr doom vibes i felt like he brought back to this role so i feel like He's obviously had a bit of exposure to the whole comic book universe and he did a wicked job in bringing just a incredibly evil, layered, complicated character to life. A lot of Cole vibes from Charmed as well, so I just feel like he did such a good job in bringing this character to life. The best scene, for sure, like all of his scenes were really, really good, but the best one in particular, I feel like, was when he had all of the pride group there and he was just causing ructions and arguments in terms of who's going to go into the box and commit suicide effectively. So yeah, just such a complicated character that was just able to just cause anarchy within this pride group and just everyone kind of fighting for their lives. So just a brilliant character. And like I said before, Elizabeth Hurley was a great kind of follow-on from Julian McMahon. I feel like she never 
fully got to his level, just maybe just a little bit below, but a brilliant kind of character in Morgan. I would have wanted to see a bit more from her character, and I wish there was a fourth season where we could have seen that, but what she did do in the third and final season was absolutely brilliant. We then had a ton of guest stars in this show as well. So Zarvin was really, really good in terms of kind of bringing the scrolls to the TV Marvel Universe. Obviously we've seen the Skrulls in Captain Marvel and Zarvin was a Skrull as well. I don't think they officially ever mentioned that, which was a shame, but you know, obviously she could do the shape-shifting powers and I feel like it was nice to kind of see out of everyone in this universe, she was the one that was kind of new to Earth and was kind of exploring everything, so that was quite funny. I think they got rid of her character at the right time because her novelty was kind of wearing off, so I feel like they kind of did a nice opportunity with her character by bringing in the Skrulls and kind of bringing in new tension for Carolina as well. Trofo was another great addition to Marvel's Runaways. I feel like he really grew the Molly character as well, kind of having this similar power potentially. And then just completely how everything that you think you know about this character was completely wrong when you kind of see the true family life and the destructive nature of the powers that he had and what he kind of caused. I feel like they got rid of his character, maybe in the opposite way to Zarvin. I feel like they got rid of Trophus' character maybe a bit too soon, because there could have been a bit more opportunity what we could have seen with that character. But either way, a brilliant addition to the team. Final two people that I wanted to talk about, AWOL, like I said before, was just a great addition. I feel like he was just truly the definition of putting himself first, caring about number one, kind of going in between all of these different groups, kind of doing the right thing for himself and his survival and then entering the dark dimension and then kind of really taunting Alex while he was over there. And then Destiny was a character that I feel like they referred to in pretty much throughout the entire run, kind of the first sacrifice from the pride, at least from the kids' point of view. So yeah, just a really, really nice character to kind of tie everything together. But overall, the cast and characters of Marvel's Runaways are excellent. The visuals for this show, honestly, I know I feel like I'm just saying non-stop positive things about this show, but honestly, the visuals were absolutely brilliant. Obviously, you have this brilliant storylines, brilliant characters, brilliant acting, and then the visuals just honestly was the cherry on top of that brilliant cake, because it really was just a visual masterpiece. Just, just taking all of the cinematic quality visuals and just putting it on a TV show, literally, and obviously Marvel and Avengers is obviously the best of the best anyway. And kind of putting that into Marvel's Runaways, just everything just looked absolutely brilliant. I'm sure they must have had a massive budget, a lot of makeup artists doing a lot of crazy stuff in this show because everything from a visual point of view, at least just looked absolutely phenomenal. Examples that I wanted to pull out was, you know, going into the dark dimension that looked absolutely incredible. All of the set pieces, obviously this is LA, so all of the mansions, all of the houses, everything just looked really, really cool. All of the powers just looked absolutely incredible. All of the set pieces in terms of Jonah's world and kind of all of the different labs and all of that kind of stuff. And then all of the different church scenes. Everything was just really magnificent. Everything was really rich. Everything was very vibrant. Everything just looked absolutely incredible. A true delight to watch from a TV viewer point of view. So in terms of comparisons, the thing that I love about Marvel's Runaways is the fact that it's got this mothership of all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies and it's just focused them on a TV show. So, you know, comparatively to the mothership of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it is really, really cool. And I guess the thing that the beauty of TV is the fact that, like I said before, is the fact that you can zone in on particular characters, moments, storylines, and really expand them. Obviously, we'll see this happening a lot more with the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the Disney Plus shows, but I just feel like it was really good comparatively in the sense that you just have this laser focus on these set of characters, these set of storylines with brilliant visuals and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, comparatively to the movies, it is really nice that you kind of get to see a lot more in terms of different characters and storyline potential. But in terms of TV show versus TV show, you know, I would say, you know, there's two main TV shows that you can compare Marvel's Runaways to. The first one I will say is Riverdale, in the sense that it's got equally great casting, great characters, great storylines, kind of, and it's got this teenage, younger group and the adult group, which have equally, you know, very compelling characters, very complicated, a lot of tension between the different groups, you know, from a format point of view, it is very similar, the two shows. Obviously, the very unique thing about Marvel Runaways is that it's got superpowers 
and kind of has the Marvel Cinematic Universe kind of umbrella within it. So in some respect, as much as I love Riverdale, I'm going to say Marvel with Runaways is a little bit better. And then we have The Gifted, which is very similar to Runaways in the sense that it's kind of got its parent characters not as good as Marvel Runaways or Riverdale. And then it's kind of got the kids group as well. And I am a massive fan of X-Men. So the fact that there's a TV show that's kind of as part of the X-Men world, not totally linked to the movies. A little bit similar, I guess, to Marvel Runaways and the MCU. But yeah, in terms of The Gifted, very, very similar format again. Again, my preference is Marvel Runaways. And then in terms of comparing it to the other Marvel TV shows, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of stick for this, but I would say Marvel Runaways, at least from my point of view at least anyway, is a lot better than the other Marvel TV shows. You know, the, the core four in terms of Punisher, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Iron Fist, all of the other Marvel core TV shows, I prefer it to all of those. And then, you know, the other... Marvel TV shows such as Inhumans, obviously a lot better than Inhumans, a lot better than Legion, I think. You know, I just feel like this show just was absolutely brilliant. It's just such a shame that it's not continuing. Hopefully it will have some kind of a rebirth, but I feel like, you know, they did cover a lot of the comic book storylines, but from that point of view, I'm grateful that we've got three brilliant seasons of Marvel Runaways. But yeah, comparatively to other Marvel TV shows, I just feel like this is definitely the best one. I also think it's a lot better than the DC suite of TV shows as well, you know. The DC universe is totally killing it with, you know, the Flash and kind of the Infinity Crisis on Earth storyline, Superwoman, Batwoman, all of these different characters, all of these different storylines. In my point of view, I'm sure as you can tell, a bit of a broken record. I do prefer Marvel Runaways to all of them, the best TV show, as I said right in the beginning. But yeah, I just feel like comparatively to the DC universe of TV shows, Marble Runaways is definitely the best. Overall, I'm sure you can tell I was a massive fan of Marvel's Runaways. I'm so gutted that it's over, but I'm super happy that we got to see three brilliant TV seasons of this brilliant show. Brilliant characters, brilliant visuals, brilliant storylines, everything about it was just really, really cool. It even had, you know, loads of references to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is really great. It would have been nice to actually link the two of them together, potentially seeing them in Endgame or, you know, kind of having some resonance of them in the movie world. We didn't get to see the impact of the Infinity Gauntlet on the Marvel Runaways world. Maybe it didn't affect anyone, who knows. But yeah, it just would have been nice to have a bit more connection between the two. I loved what we did get though. I felt like, you know, the three seasons were incredibly strong. I loved that we had a cameo of Cloak and Dagger in the Marvel Runaways world. That was really, really wicked. Overall, you know, I can go on and on and on, as I'm sure you can tell, about how much I love this TV show. If you haven't seen it yet, I would highly recommend seeing it. And yeah, I just hope that it gets some kind of rebirth or some kind of reinvigoration in the future. I'm hoping now that it is on Disney+, Plus that a lot of people get into it and then kind of tell the powers that be that they need a continuation. But yeah, effectively, as it's my favourite TV show ever, I'm going to give Marvel Runaways a pure 10 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.